So, hello and welcome to another video from sigmas.co.uk where you can find lots of free mass videos. This one's about vectors for the C4A level mass module. Okay, and it's actually my second uh, video for vectors because in the first video I explained all of this stuff, now I'm going to explain all of this stuff. So these are the basics, you should know this, go to the website if you haven't watched this already. Now. Um, in this example here, example 7, we've got two lines written in vector form and we just want to know where the two lines intersect. Now, to describe any point on this line, you can write it like this, and any point on this line can be described like that. Okay, now when two lines intersect, okay, there is one point that, that is on this line and on this line. Okay, basically this point should equal this point since it is on this line and on this line. Very simple. So that means you can say stuff like since this is the i value of this vector and this is the i value of that vector and they're both equal, that means 2 plus lambda must equal 3 plus mu. And I can also say stuff like 1 plus lambda equals 1 plus 2 mu. Could use any th three of these uh, things to, or any of these, any three of these pairs to um, generate these equations. Why do I need these equations? Because um, I'm trying to work out lambda and mu. In fact, I'm just trying to work out one of them at least, okay? Because once I know one of them, uh, I can find out that point, and that that point is the answer to my question. Anyway, so I use simultaneous equations, okay, and I work out mu is one. By the way, I just needed two equations because I got two variables. I don't know. Anyway, so once I worked out mu equals one, that means I know this point is therefore three plus one, which is four, four plus one is five, and one plus two, which is three. So that's the answer to my question simple as that. Okay, it's a very common question. Do learn it. Um, our next example, find a vector perpendicular to this vector here. Well, I'm going to call my vector x, y, z. Okay, and uh, oh, before I do that, I'm going to talk about this equation you have to learn. This is the only equation you have to learn for vectors. Okay, which is nice and convenient, and it basically talks about the angle between two uh, vectors. Okay, let's call our vectors A and B. This is a picture of the situation. Okay, the A dot B, which I'll tell you about in a second, what dot A dot B means, is equal to the modulus of A times the modulus of B times cos the angle between them, the acute angle between the vectors, and I'll talk about that in a second. Anyway, so to work, uh, we know how to work out modulus of a vector, don't we? Okay, so how do you work out mod? Uh, the dot product. This this is a dot product when you do when you say a dot b. How do you work out the dot product of two vectors? All you do is you write them next to each other, either like this or and like this, or this long form over here with a dot in between. Yeah, and you, all you do is you two times x, which is two x, plus four times y, which is four y, plus three times z, which is three z. Now, if that was, uh, I'm calling, I'm writing it like this. But uh, if this were, these were numbers, say x was a number, say x was five, I'd say two times five, which is ten, instead, instead of saying two times x, which is two x. Now, once I multiplied it like that and then added the, all the answers together, that is the dot product. Very, very easy to do. Now, I know the dot product is equal to zero because the second part of this equation, okay, and the second part of the equation is saying, as I read already, uh, the modulus of a blah 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 times cos the angle between them, okay, uh, basically where ang the angle between them is 90 degrees now. So if that's 90, then cos. Uh, let me say that again because I think I said it too quickly. Um, so you've got your two vectors a and b and the angle between them is theta here. Now if we're saying we're trying to make the vectors perpendicular that means the angle between them, the theta bit, is 90 degrees. So if theta is 90 degrees that means cos theta is zero which means all of this is zero because all times in together. So that means, in general, if you've got the dot product of two things and those two vectors are perpendicular to each other, that means the dot product must be equal to zero because, you know, that's zero. 90 is, makes cos theta zero. Anyway, so that's how we know all of this stuff must be equal to zero because this is the dot product which is equal to this, which, which must be equal to zero because they're perpendicular to each other. Now, if I've got x, y, and z and I've to work out 
well, i.e. three variables, three unknowns, and I've only got one equation, that means I don't have enough information to say x, y, and z are some specific values, which means I have to choose uh, anything I want for, say, two of the variables, say x and y, and say make z fit uh, so that all of this stuff adds up to zero. Okay, if you don't understand that principle, let me explain that quickly. Uh, say you've got two variables C and D, and they add to five. Okay, now you could have any any possible. You could you could have an infinite possibly. Am I just twisting my words now? You could have an infinite uh, possible ways of choosing f values for C and D. Okay, uh, but if I choose a value for C, um, I'm forced to choose a value for D that makes it fit, so that it adds up to five. Okay, because C plus D adds up to five. If C is one, D must be four, for example. If C is two, D must be three to make five. Anyway, so that's that. So I'm going to choose values for X and Y and make Z fit, so it all adds up to zero. So if X is one and Y is one, that makes all of this equal to six. Um, so 6 plus 3 is 8 equals 0, therefore z must be minus 2. Okay, so that's one of the many solutions you could have had, okay? And you can write the answer in two different ways, maybe 1, 1, minus 2 from here, or I could write 1i plus 1j minus 2k, whichever one you feel like. Okay, and why are there infinite possible answers? If you think about it, we're talking about... Um, what are we talking about? Uh, making a perpendicular vector to this vector, but there's so many different ways you can make a perpendicular vector to another vector, yeah? Especially if it's in 3D. Imagine a pole uh, in 3D space. You can easily make a line perpendicular to it in millions of different ways, yeah? Anyway, now the other thing I want to talk about, uh, a bit more detail about this, is when I said the angle must be acute. Or did I say that at all? But I've written it anyway. Okay, now it's easy to get a negative answer for this, okay? If uh, in a different question, um, say you know what a dot b is equal to and you know what this is equal to, the modulus of a times the modulus of b. To work out the angle between them, okay, you simply make cos theta the subject, so you just do a dot b divided by all of this, okay? Now that could be a negative answer, and as you know from your C2 module, okay, if you've got a negative answer, basically it means it's not the acute answer, because if you remember from C2, um, you only get positive, uh, on, you see, uh, the first quadrant, remember ASTC in your C2 module, yeah, the four quadrants, okay, you can only get positive answers in the first quadrant. If you've got a negative answer, it could be uh, an obtuse answer, or possibly even a reflex answer, but let's just say it's an obtuse answer, right, or whatever it happens to be, okay. Um, Basically, you don't want negative answers, so what you do is ignore the minus sign, okay, you put, the only way you're going to get a minus sign is out of this stuff anyway, okay, so ignore the negative sign that comes out of this, divide it by this, okay, so you do, basically, you do a dot b divided by all of this, and find the mod of all of that, so basically ignore the sign, okay, so you get a positive answer for cos theta, and uh, just do arc cos, and then you get the acute angle for theta. Now, what else do I want to say? Okay, final example. Um, just in case you're getting kind of perturbed by how difficult these questions look, let me just say now, what does, an ex what does a teacher do to solve any of these questions? They don't learn every single possible question. What they do, okay, is um, they understand the basic principles, and because they've done so many questions, they have confidence, and they just get on with the questions. They keep going and going and going until they basically generate equations, and then solve those simultaneous equations together, okay? Um, and they keep uh, following through any facts that they're given. Right. Sorry, I just had to pause the video so the police car just goes away. Anyway, so, um, uh, we've got to our next video, next, sorry, next example. We've got our uh, vector equation of a line here, and we're told that there's a point Q which is on line R, and um, OQ is perpendicular to R. Okay, so R is this line here. Okay, now point Q means a per, uh, 
the position vector of Q, okay, which is actually the same as OQ, because when you say the position vector of Q, um, that means the position with respect to or from the origin O, okay? And this O, by the way, means the origin O, yeah? I mean, they will tell you that in the exam, okay? But by, by default, in most cases, it just means the origin. That's why I didn't explain in the beginning. And we're saying it's perpendicular to R, and they don't use this symbol often. They don't use this symbol at all, okay? Um, I just wrote that because I don't have space to write perpendicular. Anyway, uh, so let's get on to the question. So if we want, um, so basically I'm saying if we define Q as X, Y, Z, okay, O, Q is also X, Y, Z, okay, there's one and the same thing, right. Now, if I use this fact here, O, Q is perpendicular to R, that means this uh, uh, X, Y, Z is perpendicular to the direction of this line. Now the direction of this line, as you remember from here, is uh, this this direction, because this is the direction vector and this is the position vector. This is the starting point, this bit here, and this thing here gives you the direction of the line. Okay? So, if you don't know this stuff, just go to the SIGMAS website and watch the first video yeah, that I made on vectors, which is in the A-level section. Go to C4, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, um, so, we basically know that uh, this dot this, yeah, because this is the direction, we want to do the dot product with the direction of the, the line, okay, um, so we do that, the dot product, and we should equal zero, because again, we know it's perpendicular, and yep, yeah, okay, so what's the dot product of this is x plus 3y plus 2z okay which equals zero so that's one equation okay so let me just make 100 percent sure clear that's that's understandable um, yeah when you do dot product you do dot product with two vectors don't you okay um, which two vectors should I do the dot product with definitely not that one because that's just a position I want the dot product with basically it's something that defines the direction of the vector yeah Okay, let's just get on with the next bit. Okay, now the second fact here, the point Q is on R. Well, we talked about this over here. When we describe any point on R on, on a line, basically describe it like this. T plus lambda, one lambda, is your I, I value. T plus three lambda is your J value. And three plus one lambda is your K value for any point on this line. Okay, so I can say since x is my i value for the point q, which is supposed to be on this line, I can say x sorry x is equal to two plus lambda. Okay, because that's the i value there, and that's the i value for any point on this line, so they must be equal. And in the same way, I can say y is equal to two plus three lambda, and z is equal to three plus one lambda. Right. Anyway, I wrote those equations down. Okay, and uh, I've got four equations, four unknowns, x, y, z, and lambda to work out. So basically, I know what they can be. I can I can work out what x, y, z, and la lambda can be. Sorry, my voice is going, isn't it? Um, so I'm going to solve these sim all simultaneously with one very nice trick, which is basically to stick all these equations into this equation, as it says here. Substitute two, three, four into equation one. So how do you do that? Well, since x equals 2 plus lambda, I replace the x with 2 plus lambda. And I replace the y with 2 plus 3 lambda and the z with 3 plus lambda. And I get this equation, which is very simple to solve. And it tells me that lambda equals 1. Why does it all equal 0, by the way? Because this equals 0, doesn't it? Yeah? OK. Anyway, uh, so lambda equals 1. And that basically tells me where I am on this line. Yeah? Because uh, lambda is the only variable that tells you or yeah, basically tells you where you are on the line. So if I say lambda is 1, that means where we are on the line is 2 uh, plus 1 times 1, which is just basically 3. And that's uh, y is equal to 2 plus 3 times 1, which is basically 5. And z equals 3 plus 1, which is 4. And that's it, really. That's the answer to the question. So good luck. I hope you understood all of that. I uh, hope I missed out anything. Just have some confidence, work on the principles, just keep going forwards. And these questions are brilliant, okay, for giving you the experience you need because there are not that many different types of questions in C4 and they don't really want to screw you about. Sometimes they do, to be honest, but um, 
Anyway, let's 